of the world, like the beam. Because it's time for Nerdy for 30, the podcast where we talk about nerdy-ish movies for 30-ish minutes. My name is Kevin Bauer, a.k.a. The Critic's Choice. With me, as always, is my faithful co-host, Tim Keck, a.k.a. The People's Champ. And today, we are talking about The Flash, the movie that I thought we would probably have to wait another eight years to see. I am kind of still shocked that this came out. I looked it up on Wikipedia today. I guess this movie started production in 1980. There's <laughs> so much that I want to talk about here. But Tim, first and foremost, for the people listening to this pod, what did you think of this movie? Oh, my God, Kevin. My biggest takeaway from this movie, from The Flash is that Batman is awesome. That's <laughs> that's it. That's my only takeaway. Batman's fucking sweet. I don't understand how they keep giving us different Batmans and you're like, "Well, one of them it's, it's it can't be. It's all the same stuff." And it's not, dude. Michael Keaton, <laughs> what a great take on Michael Keaton's Batman. I loved his Bruce Wayne, his Batman, the fighting styles. Each of these Batmans has a different fighting style and a different thing. We got a taste of Ben Affleck we got a taste of Michael Keaton, who's just flying all over the place. He didn't do that in the first movies, but now he flies and he crawls on stuff and he's just like agile and small and it's fun. And then Ben Affleck's like this big bruiser. And then fucking George Clooney shows up and it's <laughs> awesome. It was awesome. It's the best part of the movie. The best thing that happens in this movie is George Clooney showing up. And I never thought I would say that this is an Ocean's Eleven. This is fucking Batman where George Clooney is not welcome except for now. Now I want another George Clooney movie. I want him to be Batman so bad. Ugh. His presence showing up really negates the entire purpose of the movie and lets you know that, hey, actually, this was a complete waste of your time. But George Clooney's there. How fun is that? It's George. Oh, he looked like a million bucks, too. All these guys looked fuck. Ben Affleck looked incredible. I was mm. so pumped about Ben Affleck. We were fucking robbed of a Ben Affleck Batman. I'm still upset about it. He's so good, man. It's like it's all Batman is great. That's my takeaway from The Flash. Well, what do you think about what if we had gotten Ben Affleck in Matt Reeves, the Batman? Because as things shook down at one point, that was supposed to be the Ben Affleck standalone movie. I don't know how different it would have looked if he was directing it, but I think I could be wrong here. I think he was slated to star in that still after Matt Reeves had replaced him as the director. Would you have liked that movie more? Yes, but I, I it wouldn't have been the same kind of movie. I think this Batman, that Batman, I thought was like kind of a whiny brat in a way that I didn't love. And in the Bruce Wayne was like just a spoiled kid who cried, it seemed like. And it was just like a I didn't love his the Bruce it was, Wayne. It was still fresh for him. It had been like 20 years. So, yeah. And um, it was also a younger Batman. So he's got worse equipment and all this stuff. So, like, I think the movie would have changed drastically and for the better if what is it? The Batman? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Batman would have been a million times better if it had been a part of the, like the Justice League, the DCU, whatever it is with Ben Affleck at the helm. I think it would have been great. And at one point he was going to like direct it. And I don't think he's yeah. a bad director either. I think it would have been fun and cool. And it sucks, man. He's just he's so cool and awesome in this. It's uh, incredible. Looks like a million bucks. It's really wild just how they decided that Batman is functionally invincible in the DCEU. <laughs> yeah. Ben Affleck's Batman, he's got some kind of a weird, almost webbed looking armor on his arms, on his chest and on his legs. And apparently whatever that's made of makes it so that he can collide with a car at 65 miles an hour and be completely fine. He is Justice League Batman who plays by completely different rules than regular Batman. Because Justice League Batman is just a guy hanging out with gods. And so yeah, I even rewatched the Snyder cut yeah. after this. And Batman is so cool. I was wondering so why cool I hadn't heard from you for four days. <laughs> I was in the hole just watching the Snyder <laughs> cut, doing my thing, you know, emerged, you know, hairy and disgusting, smelly and just wiser as usual. <laughs> he's he's great in there, but they literally give him 
Wonder Woman's like gauntlets just so he doesn't get blown apart when somebody shoots at him. <laughs> like they've and he does kind of have other stuff and he definitely contributes to the team in different ways, but he is a way more higher. He's the he's the strongest Batman we get. I think in any of these movies is is Ben Affleck's Justice League Batman. And it's awesome. It's super cool, but it is a definitely a different take. Definitely different than Michael Keaton, who is not displaying superhuman strength, I don't think, in this movie at all, but agility. And he's really embrace. I mean, he's gliding everywhere, which I think is so cool and such a fun, unique take on Batman's fighting style. It's oh, yeah. great. It's what wonderful. You, you got any other Batman takes? Yeah. You know what? Michael Keaton's Batman's real superpower is, is his charisma. Somehow he yes. is still bringing this same exact Bruce Wayne energy that he brought in 1989. We've seen him do countless other roles since then. He's always a charismatic guy. And I guess I just kind of assumed that his Bruce Wayne was a function of who Michael Keaton was in 89. And we would now just get a Batman. That's a function of who Michael Keaton is in 2023 or 21 or 20 or 1980, whenever this movie was filmed. But he somehow dialed right back into that same Bruce Wayne. I felt like I was watching the same guy under that, you know, that long matted hair. They really went for the big Lebowski thing here too, just like they did for Thor. We come in, I think what the band Chicago is playing. It's like 25 or six to four is the <laughs> intro song when we see him. He's, he's great. And I love that scene. It does seem like a slightly different take on him. But it is still, I think, true to that character and a true evolution of like if we saw this guy after Batman returns and his entire life was dedicated to fighting crime and he lost everything and really wasn't Batman anymore and just felt kind of aimless and empty. I can see that guy taking this trajectory. He missed like he doesn't have the same absent minded charm that I think he does in the first one. Oh, yeah. But that seems like a. That seems like a benefit of a luxury of ignorance. Right. And then now he's kind of lost that a little bit because he's so weary and 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 aware of everything and just has to do stuff uh, a different way. I I loved it. I thought his Batman, his Batman was great. I'm ready to shit on everything else now. All right. Um, <laughs> one thing I'll say with the Justice League. Let's start with the Justice League. Wonder Woman showing up. I don't know who gives a fuck <laughs> they've been doing. They were like surprise cameos and Wonder Woman shows up. Uh, who cares? Who gives a flying shit? We've been told this doesn't matter. She's not going to be in more movies. We're not getting another Wonder Woman movie. This is the last one. And Gal Gadot shows up. Well, she showed up in Shazam, too. You can't just keep rolling out a character we all know is like a big cameo and having all of us like clap like they're fucking. It's the Star Wars treatment where they just roll out a droid and they're like, laugh, laugh, you losers. And we're like, <laughs> ha, ha, ha. oh, my God, Wonder Woman, that actress who like should be canonical in all of these things and should have played a better role and should have had a better movie and could have been built into something. But now she's just a fucking aside in this flash movie. That sucks. Awful. This movie ending with Aquaman fucking awful. What a useless scene. Absolutely trash. It's bad for the character. I know we're getting an Aquaman too, but what a fucking waste of time. It makes no goddamn sense that he's there. I don't know why you're excited about it. why anybody would be excited about it. And to just follow this cameo thread, it's kind of neat at one point to just see, you know, uh, Christopher Reeves as Superman and then seeing Nicolas Cage as Superman, which is a nod to a spec script that, um, gosh, what's his name? Who Kevin are the guys? Smith. Kevin Smith was supposedly writing and working on where Nicolas Cage as Superman fights a giant spider. It looked amazing. And it it meant nothing to me watching it. I, <laughs> my heart didn't skip a beat the way I feel like it should have. Uh, I wasn't I'm excited sorry. at all. I'm sorry. It looked amazing. I thought it was so cool. I, I like I like the idea of it a lot. I don't know <laughs> if it looked. I thought the spider looked cool. The him fighting the spider looked so much better than I ever thought it would. Any of these things that we're talking about. 
you know, did it look amazing? Like I actually want to watch that whole movie. No. Did they create a convincing Superman spider fight that made me think like, oh, that's kind of neat. Yeah, I think they did. I mean, maybe I got thrown off because it was mixed in with some of the worst CGI I've ever seen in my yes. entire life. But <laughs> I, I couldn't even focus on it. My eyes were vomiting. It was completely overwhelming. Just when I thought they'd shown me the worst deep fake I could possibly see, I was presented (laughs) with six more on a disco ball that looked like a fucking Hallmark ornament where you plug a little Christmas light in through the bottom and you can spin the disco ball and it puts out like a little, you know, stop motion image of Adam West and Burt Ward under the wall that I (laughs) It's the worst thing I've ever seen in a movie. That's it. That's it. It's the worst thing I've ever seen. We watch the monsters on this podcast. I take it back. It's not as bad as the monsters. As soon it's as I started as putting the monsters, monsters back into it. That's, I mean, you can't. <laughs> you but can't it's go close. that far. It's the not fuck, close. Yeah, it's not close at all. That's the tagline for this movie. Not as bad as the monsters. <laughs> the monsters didn't have Batman in it, which is the redeeming quality of this whole thing. Sure. He's great. But the CGI is absolute dog shit, especially after in the Snyder Cut, the Flash, his effects look so cool in the Snyder Cut. Yeah, I think the Flash looks great in the Snyder Cut. And then to come back to this where he looks stupid most of the time, it's uh, it's a bummer. It's tough, dude. That running animation that they do where his arms are waving up. He looks like goddamn SpongeBob out there. Somebody did a comparison on Instagram where it was the fight scenes from The Flash versus scenes of Makari from The Eternals fighting Icarus at the end of the movie. And the fight scene with Makari looks incredible. I didn't even really remember that part of this mixed in in a much bigger fight scene. But in isolation, it's like, oh, this is phenomenal. The, the character with super speed. Yeah. In the Marvel movie. Yeah. So like just one to one, it's not as good comparing that to Quicksilver. Quicksilver had some legendary scenes. Doesn't look as good. Mm. Uh, Quicksilver in in the X-Men looked way better. There's been other. I mean, honestly, even <laughs> somehow the TV show doesn't seem uh, the Flash doesn't seem as lame as this movie made the Flash running. Yeah. seem like it was crazy. I kind of I like the scene where he's like moving stuff kind of in slow motion as to catch all the babies. That's kind of neat, but it doesn't redeem the rest of the movie. Him looking goofy as shit. And they kind of acknowledge it right when he doesn't have his powers and he tries to run. He's just flapping around in a, you know, another charmless moment from a charmless actor. (laughs) Do you think that the flash would be even faster if Barry Allen actually had good running form? Like, does Barry (laughs) Allen need to go to a Nike run club store and have one of their instructors just teach him basic form? I was wondering about that and the mechanics of the speed force, because when he starts running, he does a big wind up. Right. He plants a foot. He goes back and it's like he is accessing this thing as opposed to just being fast all the time. Mm -hmm. But then also when he gets when Batman throws something at him, he dodges it effortlessly. So they didn't really jive with me completely, but I kind of liked the idea that he was normal. And then when he accessed the speed force, he was I kind of like the idea of a flash that could turn it on and off. Mm -hmm. But that's not really what we got either. Um, It does feel closer to that, though. It's like holding R2 to activate superpowers if you hit another button in a video game. Yeah. Yeah, it's and it opened with him in a coffee shop and times like going slow. And I thought that might be a fun thing to explore is how if a man's living in the in the speed force, how much slower everything in life is. And I think they kind of mentioned that in uh, um, Unbreakable or well, Invincible. You know that show, the yeah, cartoon, yeah. the speedster and that was kind of talking about how like all the conversations seem slow. But when I'm with you, I enjoy I enjoy talking to you or whatever. Uh, yeah, I thought that would have been a fun thing to explore. And of course, they don't. Um, yeah. What do you, I. Ezra Miller. Yeah, we got to I. Ezra Miller, controversial figure. I think there's like active court cases against them. Yeah. And they were kind of left out of the press for all this stuff. And so 
<laughs> trying to figure out the best way to say this. Part of me assumed they were going to be good in this movie. <laughs> like if we're going through all of the trouble of dealing with this criminal <laughs> and this bad person, they must be a good actor, right? And they are not. They are not a good actor. They are creepy. Beyond creepy, weird. The Flash is like some kind of a weird pervert, peeper, peeping Tom, follow you home. Weird energy from him. And the younger version of him is a little more chill. And that char- that version of the character is like more free and, and I think more gregarious and not as creepy. But in general, Ezra puts this layer of creepiness on this character that I didn't really see in the Justice League. It's it's like a new choice is just to be sketchy as fuck. And it is weird. It is alienating. It is off putting. And it also makes me think like you couldn't recap, like just reshoot, like reshoot it. You know, like I know you did the whole movie, but it shouldn't have gone this far with this acting. And who cares? I, I don't know this. It's not. Maybe they just they just had to rip the bandaid off and put this out, I guess. But Ezra Miller, bad actor. I'll say it. I think. Well, first off, I I agree. I did not like the performance in this movie. There's a really strange thing happening with Barry Allen here. And I also went back and watched the flash scenes from Justice League. I didn't watch the Snyder Cut because I wanted to see it in color. But. There's not the same weirdness. He's playing it. They go out of their way in the Justice League movie to portray Barry Allen as maybe neuro atypical. And Mm -hmm. that's a cool take. But then it gets pushed into a strange uncanny valley here where they don't really necessarily keep that in the same way. And I'm sad to see that gone in the Justice League movie. He's talking about how. You know, he doesn't understand brunch and people are moving too slow and there's all these mechanics of needing friends. And this seems a lot more like it's just straight up impatience caused by the speed force and, you know, his struggles of his life trying to free his dad from jail. Um, Oh, that's a much more generous take than I would have said. (laughs) You justified it in in a wonderful way. What a beautiful excuse for it. He was creepy in this. The Barry Barry Allen was a creep in this movie. Am I wrong? Am I not? Did you get that vibe at all? No, you're not. And I was really trying to separate Ezra's performance from Barry as a character. It's so it's maybe it's just too hard because we know all the stuff that they've done. So when we're looking at Barry being portrayed as a good guy, it's like, I don't want to I don't want to root for this guy. I don't I'm not even I don't even think it's creepy in that I brought pre-existing information to this. I think the performance is creepy. I think it's weird. I think the way he interacts with people is very weird and kind of hovers. And there's just this there's this thing to it like that. He's no longer, you know, maybe on the spectrum and doesn't understand things, but his heart's in the right place. He just oozes this like. I don't know. It's it's just creepy. I, I thought his performance was playing a sketchy character. But Barry Allen is supposed to be a character that people like, right. you know, gregarious, outgoing. Things don't always go his way. But people like Barry Allen, generally yeah. speaking. And this was a very unlikable character <laughs> and off putting and no redeeming qualities. And for some reason, this girl is in love with him, even though he's done absolutely nothing to warrant anything other than any affection from her. And they've known each other 12 hours, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no chemistry weird. whatsoever. No history with Zero these two chemistry. people. The whole decision, I, I did want to ask you about this, the decision to go this direction with Barry Allen for the DCEU. Again, I liked it when it started out and they're portraying flash as neuroatypical. I do think still other Actors could have pulled that off more convincingly. Somebody brought up, I saw somebody pitch a recasting of Andrew Garfield. And this is a completely different movie. If we have an Andrew Garfield flash, that's a great call. I think that's a wonderful one. Another one that was interesting to me is when a Justice League movie was under production back in like 2007 with George Miller attached to direct. They cast 
oh, what's his name? I almost said Sasha Baron Cohen. They cast the kid who played Seth Cohen on the OC. Help me out. But Adam Brody. Know. Adam Brody. They cast Adam Brody oh, from the OC. That'd be fun. Who I could see doing a very good version of this type of Flash. On the other side, you have, I guess, the more traditional portrayal of Barry Allen, which uh, when the movie was in production, the Flash standalone movie was in production in like 2005, they'd actually reached out to Ryan Reynolds, who was, I think, 26 at the time to play Barry Allen. And just thinking about the sheer charm that he would have brought versus what we end up getting with Ezra Miller's strange take on what are supposed to be comedic scenes. It just, it hurts that this is what we got. Yeah. There's definitely better people for it. I thought uh, the Blue Ranger from our favorite movie that nobody saw. Uh, That's phenomenal. Him? RJ Seiler would have oh. been amazing. Uh, this is the second slam dunk casting you've had for him. Where is he? <laughs> we need him back. I don't know what he does. I don't know where he's at. I hope he's doing great because I I I, <laughs> I loved him. I thought he was amazing. Wow. He's only 28. Dang, he was in the harder they fall. I liked that a lot. It's a movie called Emergency, but that guy should be way bigger than he uh, than he is. No I, question. I think he's fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Do you care about Zod at all? Not in the slightest. Does Michael Shannon? <laughs> I don't think he does. I don't think he knows what he's t- talking about. I think I saw some interview with him where he's like, I don't know. I don't understand. <laughs> what <this> is. <laughs> They're like, do you want to play Zod again? He's like, I, I could <laughs> just like the actor doesn't give a shit about it. You know? Yeah. And he's like, fine, I'll play Zod. Give me a bunch of money. Cool. That's neat. The fight scenes there were very cool. And the idea that these people kept dying and all of that. Very cool. I like the idea that that was unavoidable and I almost would have liked to see Batman die a few more times in just epic fashion. I could have been a huge chunk of the movie for me. Honestly, it's just them trying to figure it out a few times. And yeah, I also, I do want to also touch on that, how pointless the whole movie is, right? Sure. Because the whole premise is that Barry goes back in time and tries to tries to save his mom and that causes a ripple effect with everything Mm -hmm. we've talked about how in the comics flashpoint which is a great arc Mm -hmm. even bruce even the batman characters i think way more interesting because in that scenario uh bruce's parents don't die in the alley he dies in the alley and his parents uh go on to become batman and his mom it drives her nuts she becomes the joker And then that's kind of the conflict that we have in that movie. I thought it was an awesome take. And for a moment in this, when they kept calling Michael Keaton Bruce and he never referred to himself as Bruce, I got so excited. I know I shouldn't have, but I got so pumped for a minute. I I, I saw it with Spencer. I leaned over and was like, there's no he's not Bruce Wayne. This is his dad. It's his dad for sure. And then immediately it's like, nope, he was he was Bruce. He's not going to say he's Bruce, but he's Bruce. And so they go through this thing. He returns to the present, but he also has to do this thing where he helps his dad and he moves stuff from the bottom shelf to the top shelf. So ultimately he's learned nothing. Right. Right. So the whole thing happened. He he hasn't learned his lesson. He's still fucking with this stuff. His dad's freed and George Clooney is now Batman. Once George Clooney shows up, it's like, fuck, we know he has to go back in time and fix this again. And so it just made me think like, it's very cool that George Clooney showed up, but it also kind of signaled to me like, Oh, this was all pointless. Even the dad thing was a moment we got and he has to go back and fix it. So he didn't get his mom back. He didn't get his dad out of jail. He didn't solve anything. He didn't learn anything because he tried it again. And then the, then the stinger is him hanging out with Aquaman who wants to go face first in a puddle. It's like, okay, so this was point. The story's pointless. There's no reason this should have happened. Uh, It's a bummer. It's a bummer to watch this whole thing and then be told through the writing. This was a waste of your time. And I would have expected anything else, you know, but maybe this is just them being like, listen, we're done with this. This isn't going to be a part of anything going forward. We're done with the flash. We're just 
you know, we're going to give you George Clooney. That's a good enough end. We're wiping our hands of this and we don't we don't want anything else. <laughs> yeah, that's how we took it. I don't think Barry goes back and fixes it. I think Barry washes you don't think his he hands does? of it. No, I think Barry lives in this version of the universe going forward. I think he reached closure with everything else that he wanted to do. I don't even know if he's the Flash anymore. I hope he's not. Because <laughs> maybe then a different version of the Flash played by Andrew Garfield could show up. That stinger with Aquaman at the end of the movie. It's one of the most confusing things I've ever seen in my life. It was yes. too mumbled to even understand. I think Aquaman was supposedly saying jokes. He was mumbling them. You couldn't hear a goddamn thing he was saying. The comedy of it, I guess, was that he lands in a puddle and he can breathe water. So he's fine down there. And then he hands Barry an Atlantean ring and says, pay with this. And they give pauses in the scene as if the audience is just slapping their knees. People are coming through. They think other people in the movie theater think a live performance is going on. They hear all the knee slapping and think it's applause. They come in to see the last 15 seconds of the most inexplicable post credit scene I've ever seen. I I bet I think Jason Momoa is incredibly charming in real life. That's my th- I haven't met the guy. My theory is, is he's people love him just as a hang. Got and I bet people on the set were fucking dying. Like as soon as they were like cut, everyone's like, oh, my God, dude, I couldn't hold it in. Like they're just they're just swept up in his charm. And so he's like, this is going great. People are enjoying this. It's all going well. These guys are hamming it up. And so I must be doing something right. You know, I'm fucking around, taking chances. They'll take care of me. And then they don't. Then they're just like, fuck it. He's in a puddle. You know, like, whatever. It's like, it's so stupid. It's so fucking stupid. It's, it's such awful, a goddamn, dude. goddamn dumb. But from his perspective, he's crushing it. Did you know that Aquaman is a billion dollar movie? I think I I think I knew that. I think the first Aquaman did really, really well. Oh, yeah. It had a budget of like one hundred and eighty five million dollars. It made one point one five billion domestically. I don't remember being blown away by it, but I also thought it was like it's solid. It's it's fine. Oh, I hated it. I thought that was I thought that was garbage. (laughs) I'm out on Momo as Aquaman entirely. I think he's towny Thor. I think it's just a pale imitation of what Chris Hemsworth is doing. And I hope they recast him, but I don't think they will because he's their most profitable superhero. Yeah, I think he's I think he's good. I think he's different enough from Chris Hemsworth. He's just more. Um, I don't know, maybe more moody. I guess you're right. It is, it is a pretty it's a similar vibe, but I, I don't know. I kind of dig the character. I don't I don't hate it. I, I did watch the Snyder cut and I was like, you know, it's cool. Aquaman's here. I like that. He's just coming by this village, drinking beer and then like bouncing and going back to the ocean. It's just kind of cool. I thought his character was kind of a badass. He's like super strong. He's like kicking ass. I don't know. He's the only one that I'm not completely over, to be honest. I love him in that village in Alaska or wherever it is. Love yeah, him. That's there. Cool. As soon as he, as soon as he goes under the water out, as soon as he goes to <laughs> Gotham City out <laughs> Don't put him with the rest of society. I just want to see him hanging out like it's like his own little personal animal crossing island. He's just got a couple of villagers he <laughs> hangs out with and gets chores from Tom Nook. Give me that movie. I would I would love to see that. I think that'd be great. I think that's the perfect take. Make it a smaller story. Have a good time. Kevin, yeah. I got an important question for you. Oh, no. If this thing loads up, do you think. Is Aquaman better or worse than Transformers? You mean the Flash or Aquaman? Oh, did I just say Aquaman? You did. You got Aquaman <laughs> you on the brain, dude. Well, the yeah, Flash honestly. is just, I just don't think about the Flash ever. I think it's such a waste of time. He Is the Flash better or worse than Transformers? Worse. It's not better than Baho Bali. Is it better or worse than Evil Dead Rise? The thing is that I really liked the Batman parts of this movie. I think it's I think it's above that between Evil Michael Dead Keaton, Rise and Megan, probably. Yeah. Michael Keaton gets some really, really good fight scenes in this movie. I mean, just some really quality fight scenes. The thing where yeah. he's slapping grenades on that giant Kryptonian. Very cool. I love that. 
so cool. Such a fun take on Batman. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to hash it out and review preview. But, you know, everything but the Flash was the best part of the Flash. Yeah, we didn't talk about also, Supergirl did you, at all. We didn't. Uh, what do you think of Supergirl? Kind of strange. A lot of stuff that doesn't make sense. They're just kind of keeping Supergirl in holding, but her costume's right in there with her. But she's not wearing the costume. They didn't grab the costume from anywhere else. Right. It's just lying in there. Yeah. It's it's right next to her, but she's choosing to wear rags. Yep. <laughs> and and then she has nothing to do. She ultimately comes back. She's like, okay, now it's my turn to fight Zod. But other than her fighting Zod, she's not. I guess she lifts Barry into the sky and gets him struck by lightning, but I don't know. They don't really seem to have a real relationship or she just has nothing to do. I think she's, I think the actor's good. I think maybe the character could be interesting. I think they just had nothing going on. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Yeah. No shade to to the actor, but I think the character was definitely a bummer. There was some promise there. Yeah. Did you ever see, Have you watched any of the like DC animated universe stuff? I've seen. I mean, I was a massive fan of Teen Titans back in like 2003. Like that run of the show was great. Huge Young Justice fan. That show rules. But none of the other DCEU animated movies or anything like that. Yeah, they're all on the HBO. And I watched the Flashpoint Paradox, Mm -hmm. which is their kind of take on it. And it's definitely true to the comics. They take some liberties with stuff, obviously. but. In the first 30 seconds of that, you should watch. I encourage everybody. You got HBO. Turn the, turn that movie on Flashpoint Paradox. And the first 30 seconds of it, they do a much better job of flushing out Barry Allen as a character. It's beautiful. I could I could go off on this, but there is he's he's on. He, it opens with him running. And then you zoom out, you realize he's on the side of the road. He's trying to chase down a car and he's yelling at the car. When someone needs help, you're supposed to stop. And then it zooms out and him and his mom, the car broke down on the side of the road. And she's like, listen, Barry, you can't control everything. And he tells him the serenity prayer, which is right, like uh, control the change, the things you can accept the ones you can't and the wisdom to know the difference. And all of a sudden we've just got the thesis. She tells Barry, Barry's like, I don't get it. His mom says you will. And it's so concise. It's 30 seconds. It's perfect. You know, everything you need to know about Barry Allen instantly. Wonderful. The lesson, his whole dilemma. Barry Allen wants to save everyone. And it literally breaks his brain when he finds out that everyone can't be saved. And that's a real dilemma. That's an interesting character choice. And it's not explored in this movie at all. And it's such a bummer to me. The Flash as a character is really cool. I think there's a lot of depth there potentially. And they didn't touch it in any way. No, not at all. But Batman's cool. Batman's but great, Batman dude. Batman was fucking sweet. Batman is sweet. Do you agree with us? Let us know. Send us an email, nerdy430 at gmail.com. We will talk about it on our review preview episode. But probably not this one because we're taping this one right now. So it won't be there for the show next week. (laughs) But, you know, hit us up. We'll talk about it on the next one. Till next week. Thank you so much for listening. Stay nerdy, everybody. Bye. Stay nerdy. Bye.